Hey, if you have your Bibles now, please take them open to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1. We're dealing with Romans chapter 1. This is part 6. We're still in chapter 1 as we're going through a verse-by-verse study in the book of Romans. And just started this about six weeks ago. And so we thank God for that. And the book of Romans is, I believe, Paul's masterpiece of the New Testament. Uh, It's a fantastic, fantastic, and very deep book in the Christian faith. Paul takes the first three chapters of Romans, chapters 1, 2, and 3, and really shows a man in his total depravity of sin, and that's what he shows. And it's, uh, you know, we don't kind of like that at first, but it'll be a while, then we'll get out of it, and we'll get into chapters 4, 5, and 6, and you'll jump with joy, because then comes the good news. Amen? But first of all, we kind of got to look at the, the dark side of this. That she t- and this is an overall view of God's view of the Gentile nations throughout the world in history. It's how God sees man. And so Paul's giving us an entire view of that and looking at that. And again, you know, when the scriptures, when he's talking about they, 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 I try to put sometimes humans in there so you understand it's relating to everyone, not just looking at one particular little group. Amen. And the one thing I really love about chapter 1 here, uh, folks, if you do not see the doctrine of the free will of man in this chapter, my goodness, something, <laughs> something's wrong. I mean, I, I hate to say that, but the free will of man, the doctrine of the free will of man is in here. All of what Paul is showing us is, is the man's free will of choice that they've chosen. And God says, okay, if that's what you want, have at it, brother. Go for it. Well, let me tell you, there are going to be some severe consequences for it. And so we see the free will of man. So that's why I don't get off with these little groups that want to get off in this little section over here and say that man doesn't have a choice. Oh, yes, we do. Uh, The free will of man is right here in this full chapter right here with no problem. And so we're going to take a look at it. We'll do a little review right quick from last week. And then we're going to pick it up in verse 25 uh, as our text tonight, verse 25 through 28. But uh, we'll go back and review a little bit. And that's why I put verses 21 through 28 there for you. And bring a few things, and then we'll just take a little bit of, uh, of the continued theme, what's happening here, and what we're looking at, and then we'll get right into our text uh, tonight as we do. So let's pray and ask God for His anointing on the Word and for illumination tonight, understanding and wisdom on to apply it, and see what God has for us this evening. Father, thank you again for tonight. Now, now as we come to that time of to study Your Word and to open Your Word, We ask that the Holy Spirit, as always, would anoint the Word of God tonight. We ask that He would give us illumination, understanding, that He would be our teacher and our guide as He guides us into all truth. We'll ask for wisdom on how to apply that understanding that we gained this evening, uh, the application of it. Then, Father, we ask that You would grant Your servant tonight that anointing from on high that's needed to proclaim the truth of the Word of God. Father, we ask You to help us to handle it rightly and to divide it rightly uh, through the Spirit of God this evening. And, Lord, we'll thank You and give You all the praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's read uh, verses 1 through t- 21 through 28, if you'll follow along in the Scripture. We're going to back up, but our text tonight will be 25 through 28. But notice right off the bat, and I would really love to just comment after each verse here, but we want to be here all night, okay? But anyway, because that, notice here's the reason, because that, when they know, well, talk to me, then they knew God. They knew God. They glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Now that's all worship of idolatry. See, when you reject God and throw God out, you're going to replace God with something else. Okay, simple as that, all right? Wherefore, that's a, in the demonstrative mode there, which means for because of or for this reason, because of the verses we just read, God also gave them up. That's the first time he used that phrase. And notice what he gave them up to, to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God, this is where our text will pick up tonight, into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Now, that was all by free choice and free will, folks. 
Okay, you need to understand that. Who is blessed forever, amen. Who is? The Creator God is blessed forever, amen. Verse 26, for this cause, here's the second time, God gave them up. All right, first He gave them up to uncleanness, now He gives them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust toward one another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet or fit. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, here we go, third time, God gave them over. Notice He gave them up, He gave them up, now He gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Gave them up, gave them up, gave them over. Up, up, and away we go. So let's dig into this tonight, into our text, but before we do, last week we looked at verses 21 through 24. We saw the four steps downward to paganism. Four steps that lead to paganism. And humans became fools when they did not glorify God in verse 21. Just giving you my notes, you have everything that I have tonight, all right? Be there, notice the continuing theme, they did not glorify God in verse 21. They were not thankful in verse 21. They rejected God in verse 21. And they did not like to retain God in their knowledge in verse 28. You can begin to see that. And so here's what happens. So what we see in these verses in 1 through 21 through 24, we see four steps that leads to paganism, and that is willful blindness, deliberate rejection, wicked beliefs, and immoral behavior. You see how it goes, the progression? It goes from a willful bind, being blinded willfully on their own choice. Then they deliberately rejected God. And when you reject God, you're going to replace God to their wicked beliefs, which led to immoral behavior. There you can see the progression that goes down here. And so tonight we're going to look at, look at three more steps downward at least to total depravity. And we find that here. By the way, humans have a fallen nature. Would you agree with me on that? There's the total depravity of man. Now, I know there are those that do not teach that and believe that and preach that. There are those that say there's just a little good in man. That every man has a little good in him. Folks, if that was the case, we didn't need Jesus. If every man had a little good in them, then we didn't need Jesus to die on the cross for our sins because we could take care of it. You see, and that's why the Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one, in Romans 3.10. In 3.12 it says there's none that doeth good, no, not one. We've all gone out of our way and become unprofitable servants. And you get down to verse 23 of Romans 3, and Paul makes it very clear, not just this group, but we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. And so let's not just jump on these folks here, but unfortunately how sad it is. Amen. And so let's, let's take a look at it as we look here now. And first of all, let's look at the three more steps that leads to total depravity as we begin in verse number 25 and 24. I'm going to back up a little bit, but the first truth I want you to see is the perversion of truth. The perversion of truth. And so let's start out there with B and we'll jump to A. God, uh, God gave humans up to uncleanness. That's what it said in verse 24. We saw that last week, right? And, the, and notice what he said in verse 20. What's the consequences of that? When God gives us up and gives them over to uncleanness, the consequences is that they dishonored their bodies among themselves. That's the consequences. Okay? There, there are consequences for our sin. You, see, you need to understand that. And so we're, we're going down. So then he comes back to verse 25 now, and he says that they changed the truth of God for a lie. They turned the truth of God uh, and exchanged it for a lie. Matter of fact, if you want to look up that word change there, I love word studies, by the way. That word change means exchange. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie. That's exactly what's going to happen during the tribulation period. 2 Thessalonians chapter 5 says what's going to happen. All right, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12, the Bible says that they're going to believe the lie of the Antichrist. They're going to believe the lie. They're going to exchange God's truth, God's word for a lie and believe the lie of the Antichrist. Therefore, God is going to send them a strong delusion to believe the lie. So we see it right here. 
You see that in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12. Write that down there in your notes so you have it. They changed the truth of God for a lie. There you have it. That's what it says in verse 25. Then notice what else in verse 25. They changed God's truth again. Well, how, how do they change it? How do they change God's truth for a lie? Well, first of all, they changed it through sexual perversion. That's how they changed the truth of God's lie, through sexual perversion. In other words, they changed the natural use of their bodies, what God intended. That's what the Scripture says. Amen? Amen. Verses 26 and 27 says that, that they changed their natural use. They, so they changed God's truth for this lie through sexual perversion, and then they changed it through spiritual perversion, through false gods. Are you with me, church? Okay, and thirdly, by forsaking God and truth, you see. When you change the truth, you're going to forsake God uh, uh, for truth, and that's what they did. I love what Habakkuk wrote. Look what Habakkuk wrote here. This is fantastic. Go to the Old Testament with me here. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. Notice what it said. What profiteth the graven image? In other words, what profit is there in a graven image? All right, you got that? That the maker thereof have graven it. That is the one who carved it out and made it. The molten image. And a teacher of lies, that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto them that saith to the wood, Awake! To the dumb stone, Arise! It shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. Let me tell you something. There's no breath in an idol. You can go and bow down and kiss and hug all the, go- all the wooden idols you want to and the ceramic idols and the stone idols and kiss their rings and their knees and their toes and all that stuff. And I'm telling you, these idols, they cannot hear, they cannot see, they cannot do anything. They are nothing but dumb idols that somebody has carved out. And so why in the world would you want to change the truth of God into a dumb idol? But that's what they've done. If you read the verses, what did they do? They changed the image of God into what? Into into the corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts. These are animals. You understand that? They're animals. You go over to Greece and Rome today, and you won't even be able to find a man. All you're going to see is all these uh, statues and idols. Of beasts and four-legged animals and birds and all kinds of stuff and ghouls and and all of that. I mean, that's what they see. And this is what they did. They exchanged the truth of God to worship some stone God or some wooden God. You know, some false God. I love the one in the Bible there about the stone God that stood up when the body fell over and fell on his face on the ground. You know, I I get a big kick out of that one. And that's a good one. But look what Habakkuk says here. So you see, so when you change the truth, you do that by forsaking God in truth and you change the truth. See, when you forsake God and kick God out, you're going to replace it with something. And that's exactly what they did. And what did they do? It says, well, if you're not going to worship God, you're going to worship something else. Everybody worships something. All right? Everybody worships something. And guess what? You get to have the free will and choice as to who and what you're going to worship. You can worship a person. You can worship a thing. You can worship an idol. You can worship whatever you want to do. You can worship a bird. You can worship a four-footed beast here. You can worship every creeping thing. You can even worship a man. Why would you want to do that when you can worship God? But this is what they did. Exactly what they did. You see, they worshiped, the humans worshiped creation. Look at verse 25 again with me. Okay? Who changed the truth of God... They changed it into a lie, and they worshiped, and notice what else they did. Not only worshiped, but they served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So we see the humans serve the creature in verse 25. Oh, we have that, that. That's nothing new today. You know, kill the baby, save the whale. Hello. Kill the baby and save the whale. See, they worship creation, and you say, well, that's nothing new, folks. We do that today. You can go back into, I guess, the 70s or 80s, whenever it came out. How many of you remember worshiping and Mother Earth? That's called gala worship. Okay, it's when we worship Earth. Gala worship is a big one today. We're going to worship the Earth we're going to worship the planet. We're going to worship the bugs and, the, and all the creepy things on it and all of that stuff because we've changed the truth of God into a lie. 
And this is where we're at today. This is where our society is at. Matter of fact, they changed it into the fact that they worshipped animals. In other words, they placed a more value on animals than they did people. And by the way, if you don't think that's true, go look it up. I was looking that up on that, and I said, well, that's something to think about it. And we're going to turn to Psalms 81 here in just a minute. But I went to look and looked into some states to see what was the punishment for animal abuse. And what was the punishment for child abuse? Did you know that in some states it's more punishable and more severe punishment for animal abuse than it is child abuse? You see the depravity of man and where we're headed? Can you imagine? Can you believe that? That's why I said, kill the baby, save the whales. Turn to Psalms 81 with me. Go back to Psalms 81. I like to look at a few passages of Scripture every now and then. So everybody in Psalms chapter 81, right there in the middle of your Bible. And I think Psalm 69 is the middle, middle chapter of the Bible. Psalms 81. All right, everybody in Psalms 81? All right, let's look at verse number 9, 9 through 12 in Psalm 81. All right, here we go. Psalms 81 and verse 9. The Scripture says, There shall no strange God be in thee. What's the psalmist say to us? There shall be no strange, notice little g, God be in thee, neither shall thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel uh, none of me. My, 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 we're in deep trouble, aren't we? And so we see here that, 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 that they placed a greater value on animals than we do today. They want to save every kind of animal. They want to save the trees and everything else. But who cares about the homeless and the, and the widows and, the, and, the, and those in the homes and everything that are out there? I mean, the, the life is nothing. Uh, human beings and life is, is worth nothing anymore. Because, you see, we've changed the truth of God into a lie. And we see where the total depravity of man is going. You see, we see the downward steps. This is the fifth step in going to total uh, depravity. So that's the perversion of the truth, and that's exactly what's happening today. Matter of fact, you can read it there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. I encourage you to go there later and look at it, but write it down so you'll have it. And then you can go over to 1 Timothy, what I quoted this morning, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, that they're going to turn their ears away. They're not going to bear up under sound doctrine. They're not going to endure it. That means to bear up under it. And they're going to turn their ears away from it to teachers having itching and tingling ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. If you don't think so, I was talking to a young man tonight, and, and, and he's from a Christian school. And, and, and we were talking, and he was sharing with me up here that the kids don't want the truth anymore. They don't want the Word of God. That's sad, though, isn't it? And that's a sad when, you, when we hear reports that even the kids don't want the Word of God anymore. They don't want to hear the truth anymore. Amen. Oh, my, we, we're in deep trouble. So the, first, the fifth step of leading to total depravity is the perversion of truth. And that's what we read here. They're changing the truth of God into a lie. All right, so let's look at another one. How about that was the perversion of truth. Now let's look at the perversion in sin. The perversion in sin. Notice in verse 26 with me now. What's the scripture say in verse 26? For this cause, that is because of the verse we just read in verse 25. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. Well, what are vile affections? Well, he tells us there. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. That's a vile affection. Hello. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemingly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Vile affections, vile passions, okay? And so first thing we see in this is practices. They practice. Humans practicing or exchanging the natural use against nature itself. And they're practicing this. 
Folks, in other words, this is the first thing of this, of this, of what we're talking about here, of, of, of what we're talking about, vile affections, is the practice of it, and that is departing from the normal. They're parting from the normal. You understand that? Okay, that's, that's what's going on here. A vile lifestyle, immoral practices. This is a result of saying no to God. When men forsake the author of nature, he will inevitably forsake the order of nature. This is where we're at. This is where our society is going. This is where our culture is going. This is where we have men and women sitting in Washington that are right now passing laws and all in favor of this. And making laws possible for even 10-year-olds to go in into a clinic or to a hospital to a doctor, a perverted, wicked people, and have all kinds of sex operations uh, against nature, uh, that these men and women are passing laws on this because of the wickedness and the vileness of their heart. Man, you say, why are you getting so bent out of shape about this? Look it up and watch and see what's going on, folks, and there's going to be a great judgment for this. And I'd rather see a great revival than a great judgment of God. God makes it very clear there's going to be a great judgment on this. Unless there's a, an awakening. You know, we've only had two awakenings since the Reformation. Y'all remember the Reformation, right? Okay, Martin Luther and the Reformation. All right, since the Reformation, we've had two awakenings. That's it. Well, we've had a few little revivals here and there, and we've all been in them. And Lord knows, for 10 years I traveled the circuit preaching revivals. But, you know, I don't bring revival. God does. But, and we saw some great moves and some great meetings, man. We saw that over at Bible Baptist. And that's how I ended up getting over there and staying over for five years because the pastor couldn't believe what God had did. And it was fantastic, I mean, what God did in that. But it wasn't me. That was the Holy Spirit. But, you know, we didn't have an awakening there's been two greats awakening. You ought to read the Welsh awakening. Oh, my goodness, man. That, that is something. That'll blow your mind. That's fantastic. So I, we're either going to have a great awakening or there's coming a great judgment. And I believe that the great judgment that's coming is the tribulation hour, which means we as believers have got to get out of here. Or we have a great awakening. And if not, there will be one in the tribulation hour. And so, but I won't be here to see it or preach it. I'm going to be in glory. Amen. Amen. And so you have some of my notes. I'm not going to take time to go through all of this, but just look at number two there, for instance, number one. If you want to practice this lifestyle and give into this lifestyle, society will come to an end because there's no reproductive capabilities. I mean, you just look at it from science, from biology. You know, science, good doctors, you know, n normal good doctors that know biology and the makeup of the human body and scientists and biologists and everybody else knows that, 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 that men with men and women with women, there's no reproductive capabilities. Amen. You take them all out here and put all the men on one island by themselves and let them live out there. They don't want to live this lifestyle and they'll die off in no time because they will not be able to reproduce themselves. And the same thing with the women. You see, it's against biology. It's against nature. Amen. There's some other things you can read at and get in. When you see me, you look at something. I don't mean, these are just my abbreviations, okay? I have to abbreviate my notes down. And, and then, so you got what I had abbreviated here tonight. And I don't want to take the time to go through all that. But you know what? Even animals understand the reproductive process. Did you know that? Amen. When all these people do this kind of stuff and everything, the Bible calls them eunuchs. All right, so I'll just give you an idea with that, all right? But hey, folks, God's design, let's just take a moment to look at God's design. God's design is not men with men and women with women. It's just that simple. That goes all the way back to the very beginning. Amen. All right, let's go back to the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. God said, let us, speaking of the Trinity, the, whole, the, the Trinity, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So the Bible says he created man and woman in his likeness. Okay, just so you understand that. And God created marriage, the family. Genesis 1, 28. Genesis 2, 18. Genesis uh, 2, 21 and 25. God told Adam and Eve to go and multiply. Reproduce. You can't do that between two men or two women. You understand that? You cannot. 
You can go have all the operations you want to, and you can have all and try to change your plumbing, but it doesn't make no difference in the end. God is the one that decides the gender, not you or the wicked doctors. God decides the gender. You're going to be a man and a man, and a woman is a woman, period. And all they do for all of that stuff, they don't tell you that. Then you can go out and look at all some of the, all the psychological problems and the, and, the, and, and the health problems and the cost and the money. You don't see all of that. They're not going to show you all that and tell you all of that and what it costs. And these folks, for, for the rest of their lives, I mean, my goodness, I'm going to tell you something. Children are best protected inside and intact in their families with a mother and a father. Period. So we see the practice exchanging the natural use of nature. Then we come down and we look at the natural consequences, the punishment. Nobody wants to hear the punishment, but remember we started out two weeks ago, and God, in verse 18, God revealed His wrath on man. In verse 16, God showed His grace and mercy and salvation. You see, in verse 16 of this chapter. And in verse 18, we see the wrath of God is revealed on men. And it starts off with four and four. Four is a connective word. It connects the two together. Well, you can study that later on if you want to. All right, so the natural consequences. Look at verse 27. Here's the natural consequences. If you want to go that way, choose that lifestyle, live in that lifestyle, there are going to be natural consequences when you go against nature and God's plan. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust toward one another, men with men, working that which is unseemly. And then watch that. Here's the punishment. Receiving in themselves that recompense, that's the pay, of their error, which was meet or which was meet or fit for them. So the consequences. See, now, now, the, men, now the men and their ungodly acts. They're going to receive something in within themselves. That is the punishment. Them to receive something, that's the retribution. The penalties of their era. Look down at verse 32 with me in that chapter. Go to Romans 132. Who knowing the, the what church talk to me? We're in the same chapter here now, same context, all right? Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, and not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now that's the Word of God. We've got to get some men back in the pulpit to stand up and preach the truth and say, Thus saith the Lord. Not what thus saith the Washington, or not what thus saith the, the culture, or the society, but what thus saith the Lord. And if we get more men in the pulpit preaching on sin, we just might have another awakening. But we're not going to have an awakening until men know that they're a sinner and they need a Savior and they need to repent. So they're going to receive something, folks. The Scripture says so. They're going to be compensated for what they deserve. And this is all free will and free choice. This is what they chose. And so God gave them up to these things. God gave them over to these things. You want to do these things? Go for it. I showed you my grace. I showed you my gospel. I sent my son. I gave you everything. I showed you my creation. I gave you everything you needed to get saved and repent. But you didn't want me. You didn't want God. You didn't want my grace. You didn't want my love. You didn't want my mercy. You didn't want my salvation. You kicked me out. So have at it. Do what you want. And that's exactly what they did. That's exactly what man's doing today. Exactly. You see, when you defy the laws of nature, guess what? Something's going to happen. How many of you believe in the law of nature? How many of you believe in the law of physics? How many of you believe in the law of gravity? That's against nature. You go out here and jump off a cliff, I'm going to tell you something. I got some good news and some sad news. The good news is, is you're not going to stand out there in midair. The good news is you're not going to turn around and walk back on the cliff. The sad news is, is you're going to fall and you're going to die. When you defy, defy the laws of nature, there's consequences for it. And this is exactly what's happening, what's going on. You see, now we talk about doing these practices, biology, on the parts of body that are not designed to be used. Folks, we're not to be doing this. We're not to be changing, cutting off our body parts and everything else and off of a 10-year-old. 
I keep bringing this up because this is exactly what happened. One of our states. They didn't, have, they didn't have to have the parents' permission or anything else because, you see, our wonderful government and lawmakers now are passing laws that they can go and do this. I'm telling you, listen to me. The, law, the government, the children are not yours. They're the parents. And they belong to the parents. You have no right to pass these wicked, ungodly laws. As I said, why are you preaching so hard and getting so frustrated, wrapped up in this? Because, folks, if we don't have an awakening, it's the judgment of God is coming. It already is, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Because he said it in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed upon men. Amen. Wow. And what's, what the problem is when they practice this and they do all this stuff, I'm telling you, these blessed, I'm not, not blessed, but these poor people, they're, 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 they're trapped. They're caught in a trap of the lie of the devil. Listen to me. The devil is a liar. He's a liar from the beginning. The truth is not in him, and he is the father of lies. And don't fall into the trap of these lies of what this verse is talking about. Amen. And they're in a trap. And if they get honest and tell you so, they're in a trap and they don't know how to get out. Amen. They're frustrated. They're angry. Inside. Yeah, they can parade out here in their parades and their little outfits and for a while fly their little rainbow flags and all that stuff and, 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 desecrate, and, and desecrate God's promise of the rainbow to the planet and so forth and all that. And they're laughing on the outside, but they're crying on the inside. Amen. Elvis Presley, caught in a trap. Can't get out. They're caught in a trap. But I got good news for you. You can get out. There's always a way out. As long as you've got breath and you're believing and breathing, just be the choice you made to get into this, you can make a choice to get out. But God commended His love towards us. And then while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And there's a way out. See, what happens when you get in this, the body becomes inflamed and diseased. See, there's the recompense. I went out and did a little research on disease in America today. Right now, the disease in America is the highest it's ever been in the history of our country, and it's climbing faster. We can keep up with it. 1 Corinthians 6.18 says, flee fornication. That's sins of immorality. Flee it. Why? Because every sin that's done outside the body, that's sin. But, but fornication is inside the body. They sin against their own body. Sexual immorality. And they get what's deserving meat for them, the Scripture says. So I know this is hard. I told this morning, I said, it's going to be hard tonight. But I can't throw this page out of the Bible and say, well, I don't like what this says, so there you go. Well, I know what I'll do. I'll do like the Episcopal priest here in, in Ocala. I'll go write my own Romans to fit my own lifestyle. Yeah. That even made the news here several years ago. He got caught in that lifestyle. And they were going to excommunicate him out of the fellowship and so forth. But they didn't do it. So he felt like he'd won a great victory. And then he says, I'm going to rewrite Romans. May I remind you that God said both Old and New Testament, you better not mess with my book. Because if you take away from it or add to it, I will add to you all the plagues that are written in this book. Wow. God takes this stuff pretty serious, church. He really does. And I hope we take it serious too. So we got to move on quickly. We need to go. We'll wrap it up here now. So the first saw, thing we saw tonight as we started out in our, our study here, the perversion of truth. Amen. All right? That was the first thing we looked at. Then we looked at perversion in sin. Now looks, let's look at the persistence in unbelief. See, the fifth downward is what? 
is the perversion of truth. That's the fifth step to to total depravity. The sixth step is what perversion is sin. And now we're going to look at the sixth step tonight as we look at uh, very quickly here the the, the persistence in unbelief. Look at verse 28 with me and we're done. And even as they did not notice, they did not like. Well, we don't like this. Well, what didn't they like? They didn't like to retain God in their knowledge, in their mind. Are you with me, church? You see, the persistence in unbelief, the total depravity, is it is a willful turning. They willfully turned from God. They did not like to retain God in their mind, their thoughts, their knowledge. In other words, they did not want to retain God in their minds because why? It was a willful decision. Willful perversion then turns to moral perversion. And you can look up Proverbs 1, 28 through 32. And, uh, well, matter of fact, I'll read it. If you don't look it up, I'll read it. I can't, we can't revise some of this stuff. I just can't do it. Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs. I'm going to go to Proverbs chapter 1. All right, let me read Proverbs chapter 1 to you. Everybody in Proverbs chapter 1. I'm going to look at verses 28 through 32. Here we go. Proverbs chapter 1. Then shall they call upon me... But I will not answer. They shall seek me early. Ah, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge. What? They did not retain, want to retain God's knowledge in their mind. So they that hated knowledge and did not choose. There's the free will of man. The fear of the Lord. They would would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Are you with me, church? There's what King Solomon had to say about it when you told this will for turning. Well, let me tell you, assure you about all of this. It is witnessed by God. All of this is witnessed by God. See what happens, church? When moral perversion comes, mental perversion, and they think it's okay. When moral perversion comes, mental perversion, and they think it's okay. It's witnessed by God. Because we read in the next part of the verse there, notice with me, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, or a debased mind mind. What does that mean? It means it is a mind that can no longer approve that which is good. They lose the ability to know what is right and what is wrong. Now, if you don't think so, you can turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 5 with me in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 5. I've gave you the notes there so you can look them up later. But for the sake of Rumble and all of them that are watching, YouTube, television, everything, everybody in Romans, uh, Isaiah chapter 5. All right, Isaiah chapter 5. It starts off with the parable of the vineyard. But when we get to chapter, verse 8 of Isaiah chapter 5, here starts the fate of the wicked. The fate of the wicked. Now, before we read the verses I'm going to read, I want you just to follow along with me here, if you would, please, okay? All right, look in verse uh, 8 with me. 8 starts off with what? A woe. You know what that is? It's a judgment. Look at verse 11. What do you see? Woe, judgment. Mark down down to verse 18. What do you see? Woe, judgment. Look at verse 20. Woe. Look at verse 21. Woe. Look at verse 22. Woe. These are the judgments of the wicked. And what I said here, when they call evil good and, right, and, and, and good evil, listen to what Isaiah said. It wrote it over 2,500 years ago. This is what's fantastic about the Bible, folks. It's right up to date. Beginning in verse 20. Woe to them, in other words, a judgment pronounced on them, that call evil good and good evil. That's what a debased mind does that God gave them up to. Are you listening, church? They put darkness for light and light for darkness. They put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Next, woe. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. 
Verse 22, Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink. This is what's happening with our society today. Everybody's wanting to call evil good and good evil. And the sad thing is, church, is what one said a long time ago, you know the phrase, all we need for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Well, we need to, we need to get some so-called good-for-nothing preachers out there and start quit calling the good evil and evil good and start preaching the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Persistent in their unbelief. May I remind you again, as we said this morning, God is not mocked. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In other words, church, what you sow, that is plant, you shall reap, that's the harvest. You know the old story, if you sow to the wind, you'll weep a whirlwind. Amen. Amen. So even with all of this on, and this is pretty heavy, and I condensed this down to four pages instead of twelve. So let's not leave on a, a sad, heavy note. Because just think, folks, if we're not by the grace of God, there goes you and I. And I'll remind all of us here tonight, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. There's none of us righteous here tonight. No, not one, the Scripture says. There's none that even doeth good. No, not one. We've all gone out of our way and become unprofitable servants. Now, we're going to see all of this in chapters 1, 2, and 3. As Paul shows to David the Gentile nations of the total depravity of sinful man and our condition and how God sees us. But when we get into chapters 4, 5, and 6, it's going to be shouting time. And one of the words you're going to shout about is in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. And we'll go home that with that tonight. But God, say that with me, but God commendeth, he proved, he demonstrated his love to usward while we were yet sinners of chapter 1 of Romans, that Christ died for us. And Christ dies for all of you that are caught in this trap. You're frustrated, you're angry, you feel there's no way out. And especially my heart goes out deeply, deeply for any of you that have gone into these lies and these lying doctors and clinics that tell you you're going to be okay and this is all right and this is normal. This is not normal. And you've mutilated your bodies. Let's call it what it is. Because we got our politicians writing laws saying that it's okay, that this is normal. And they use words to make it sound like that. I feel for you, and I'm sorry that for somehow, some way, someone convinced you and caused you to believe the lie of the biggest liar on this planet. And that is the devil. He is the father of lies. The truth was not in him from the beginning. And you have swallowed his lie. And I am so sorry that you have. And you feel like there's nothing you can do. Now, no, unfortunately and sadly, sometimes there's nothing that you can do when you've removed body parts. But I got some good news for you. You can get saved, ask the Lord to forgive you, and you know what? You're going to get a new body. One day in glory, you're going to get a glorified body. And don't worry about the parts that have been mutilated and cut up. God will take care of that. He's going to give you a brand new body. Now, I know in the meantime... There's some suffering and pain. Matter of fact, not some, a lot. It goes along with it. I can't even imagine it. I can't even understand it. But I know God loves you. And so does Jesus. And even though you've been caught in a trap, you're angry, you're frustrated, there is a way out. And his name 
is Jesus. If you're willing to come to Christ, now I don't know where you're at in your life. I don't know who's watching this. I know Rumble's watching it. And uh, it'll go out tomorrow on Rumble. It goes out tonight. She's going to reload it up in just a moment. And it'll be back on Rumble. And you can watch it again and again. And then later on it'll be edited. And it'll be on uh, YouTube. And then our YouTube channel. It'll be on our website. It'll be on Cox Television. It'll be on Super Channel 55. In a, another week or two from now. Just hang in there with us. And you'll be able to watch it. And I'll probably really catch some flack when this goes out there. I guarantee you that. But I'm telling you there's a way out. And we'd like to offer you that way out right now. You just simply would be willing in your heart and mind to come to Christ. And you say, I've done too many evil things and wrong things. No, you haven't. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. If you're willing to come and admit to God that, hey, I messed up. I'm sorry. I believe the lie. I made some big bad choices. But right now I'm willing to turn from all of that and turn to you, Lord, and come to you and to trust you to forgive me and to cleanse me, to change me, and to help me until I do die or that rapture thing the preacher was talking about takes place first. And then by your grace and your mercy, I'll get a brand new body. Wow, wouldn't that be something else? Wouldn't that be something else? And my friend, can I be honest with you and tell you the truth again? If you choose not, and it's a choice you make to come to Christ, you still will have a body that will live for all eternity in a place of suffering and pain and torment that's called hell that was prepared for the devil and his angels. Oh, my friend, you don't have to go there. You can go to heaven and be sure of it. Why not trust Christ? Let me help you do that, please. Let me help you. Would you be willing just to pray with me? Pray from your heart. Pray from a good mind, a good thinking, good reasoning, and just pray with me. And we're going to ask the Lord to forgive us. We're going to ask the Lord to come into our life and change us and save us, take us to heaven someday when we die. And you can do that right now. I don't care where you're at, where you're watching, where you're listening, whatever. Would you pray with me, no matter where you are? Simply pray this. Dear God, that's right. Go ahead. I confess with my mouth, you are the Lord from heaven. That's what the Bible says. If we confess with our mouth, he is the Lord. Okay? I confess that I'm a sinner. And boy, have I sinned against you in heaven, Lord. I've believed the lie of the devil long enough. I've made some bad choices and bad mistakes. And I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me of all my sin. And he will, my friend, he will. I promise you on the authority of God's word, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make you whole again? Nothing but the blood. And so right now, I believe that you died for me. You shed your blood for me. I believe you were buried. and That you rose again on the third day according to to the scriptures, the Bible. And so right now by faith, Lord, the best way I know how, I do call upon you and ask you to save me, to forgive me, to come into my heart and life, to be my Lord and my Savior. And I pray this little simple prayer in faith believing in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And on the authority of God's word, my dear friend, if you meant that, you were sincere in all your ounce of your being. God forgave you. You have been forgiven. And you have a new life in Christ now. Now live for him and serve him. And yes, no matter whatever you've done and gone through, there'll be scars, there'll be memories. But the Spirit of God will help you through it. And one day, you'll have a brand new body. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll pray that some of you got saved. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you again for tonight. We bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Lord, take this message. But use it for your glory, for your honor. To help spark Christians, pastors, preachers. 
not be afraid to preach the truth of God's Word. Use it mightily for your glory to help those that are caught in a trap and they feel like there's no way out. They feel like they're in the bottom of the barrel and the light coming down is the light of an oncoming train. Let it be the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The pen of the scribes is in vain. In other words, God's saying, is what I've written to you is in vain? Is the way you're behaving and acting, you're saying what I wrote was in vain? The wise men are, are, are ashamed. They are dismayed and, and taken low. They have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? There's no wisdom today in America again because we've ignored the word of God. We've turned our back on it. We've gone astray. We've gone away from it. We're talking about God's word. That's what's going to change the direction. That's what's going to tell us what's right and wrong, church. That's what's going to tell us what pleases and displeases God is the word of God. Not the professors in the liberal colleges. Not the professors in our liberal theologian colleges and seminaries. Question the word of God. They question the deity of Christ. They question the virgin birth. They question God's word, whether this is really God's word or not. They question even the Trinity. They question whether Jesus is virgin born. They question whether he is deity in, in the flesh. Oh my goodness, no wonder our churches are in a mess. We got professors that don't even know the word of God. And if they know it, they change it. The king is coming. He's coming to rule and reign in righteousness. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords to the glory of God the Father. You can stand before him at the great white throne judgment only to hear these words, depart from me, I never you, you cast into everlasting fire. Or you can stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ and here enter into the joy of thy salvation. Hallelujah. Which one do you want, America? No, for every man. Jesus died for the sins of the world. He died for the sins of every man that walked on this planet since Adam, not just for a few select chosen people. God would have never put his son through all of that just to die for a couple of people when he died for the sins of mankind. He took on flesh. He clothed himself in humanity, lived a perfect and sinless life, went to the cross, was executed on the cross, shed his blood that we could all be forgiven. For whosoever will may come, let him come. The knees didn't move so good. The back didn't do so good, you know. The eyes weren't open yet and couldn't see so well. And I was going, oh, Lord, I said, man, I don't think I'm going to make this. You know, if you don't give me some strength, some physical strength, I'm not going to make this. This journey, this body is, is wore out. I mean, come on. And I said, no. And he said, wait a minute, what are you preaching on today, boy? I said, I'm preaching, I'm anticipating a change when Jesus comes in the clouds of glory. And today, Lord, you might come today and I get that change. Hallelujah. I get a glorified body. No more pain. No more glasses, no more eardrums, no more this, no more false teeth, if, or no teeth, whatever you got. I'm going to become the toothless pastor before this thing is all over with if God doesn't make them last a little bit longer. No more back surgeries, no more knee surgeries, no more kidney surgeries, no more, no more, no more pain, no more suffering, no more dying. I'm going to be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and I'm anticipating it because the King of glory is coming. Hallelujah.